Hey friends, just real quick, I've got a treat for you here. This is an old investigation video my dad Johnny Henderson recorded on his camcorder around 2004 or 2005 with me, Gabby, and his friend Jose Agostini who, if you watch The Brain Beast of Indian Mound, you know he was a researcher in Indian Mound. So this here is a research video from Ashland City, Tennessee, and it is the same property from our video a backyard Bigfoot. So please check that out. Now, please enjoy this work of my dad, Johnny Henderson. A creature or something here on his property. Uh, his son saw it, said it's somewhere between 8 and 10 feet tall. It was watching one night as he was riding his four wheeler around his property. We got here just a few minutes ago and we've already noticed something strange. We're walking back towards the woods where they saw this thing originally and we noticed that there's a big cedar here and there's a couple of limbs, small limbs, laying down on the ground. And we got to looking to see if we could find where these came from. It's unusual to find these things twisted off just laying on the ground. Jose happens to notice that they're up higher than what a normal person could tear them off. Uh, He's going to point and demonstrate exactly where, so if I can get back for scale to show where. One came from here, basically right here, around the tip of my finger. The other one came about five or six inches higher than the tip of my fingers. And you're reaching up right now, Jose. How tall are you? I'm five, nine and a half. You're five, nine and a half. And how much taller would you say it is? With my whole and arm stand it'll be about seven feet right here seven feet to the where it was torn off i'll say a little higher than that maybe eight feet about eight, seven and a half i'll say however i'm going to do a demonstration right now about the same height that that thing has been ripped off and there's no way that a normal person my height can do it basically i have to jump first of all to reach something like that and to twist it, it won't twist and it won't break. So it takes a little more than just average strength to do it. Not only that, as you can see, it'll stay just the way it was. However, now point to where these come off. I see it right there. See if I can number one focus is right there. in on it. There's number one right there. Uh, one came from here. The second one came from here. And the second one came from here still taller than what we could reach. Still taller than what we can reach and not only that, to actually rip it off from there you have to be a, a lot taller to be comfortable to actually rip it off as the way it was. So that's number one. Alright, well we're going to pause here and we're going to look around a little more. We got our little investigators here. Say hello to the group. Hello to the group. <laughs> I don't know how the sound will turn out on this. I've had some trouble with this camera, but hopefully it'll do the trick. Actually, Johnny, if you go a little further, about 15, 20 feet away from this tree, there's one tree that has been ripped right there. We, we can follow it. Let's go over here and see what he has. He tells me, or I heard that a while back, he woke up in the middle of the night and there were helicopters everywhere or flying around and then he starts hearing something running real hard tearing and breaking limbs down through the woods now here we've got a tree just a very short distance from where the creature was sighted the first time and to where the damage to the pine tree or the cedar tree is and you can see this is a pretty sturdy tree here but something's just bent it over and i don't think that it'd be easy for a person to do this i'll check with Rick later and see if by some chance him or his family done this but we're going to look around a little more and see what else we can find. We've heard something off in the background yelling a minute ago, but we didn't have the camera working in time. Not really sure what that was, but we're going to continue our investigation. Okay, we're back here. I don't know if you can see this very well. We're about 100 yards into the woods, and we've already come across many, many things that would seem to show it an, an occupation by something here. Uh, the site we're at now is still in the woods behind 
Jones' house. We uh, come out here to investigate because we heard that his wife has been hearing a lot of things walking in the woods and carrying on. And we come into the woods, like I say, we're about 100 yards in, and the first thing we notice is two trees pushed together to form an X. It's a perfect X. And it doesn't appear that it's possible for it to be storm damage because the trees are pushed from different angles. And they're very sturdy in the ground, what's left of them. And just a short distance away, I don't know if you can see where my daughter's at from here. I'll try to get down. There's another X with the sticks laying together. Try to get a close up here. And right beside it, we have what appears to be an arch. We've got a very sturdy tree. It's a cedar tree, very sturdy, and it's bent over. And other trees laying against it, other limbs rather. There's nothing really that should have brought this tree down. There's no trees that have fallen across it and nothing that weighs enough to have bent this cedar over like this. Very bizarre situation down here. Here's the back side of the X where the two trees are pushed together. Jose, would you stand underneath it for scale? So it took somebody pretty strong to push these together. And a very bizarre thing we found over here. Terry and Judy Trainer found a cedar ball at one time. And we found a pile of what looks like, well, I'll just show you. I don't know what it is, but it's cedar strings. It's right over here. It looks in places as though it's been weaved together, probably very much like the cedar ball. And there's some more right here, just a small amount. I think when I leave, I'm going to take this as evidence. Something's really hit a ball with this cedar here. There's obviously some kind of activity here. And a member of the UBRG three or four maybe five years ago was somewhere around two to five miles from this site and standing in the middle of the road early in the morning they saw an eight to nine foot creature standing with a dead deer across its shoulder it jumped off the side of the road into the woods and took off I have every reason to believe this is the same creature we're going to continue our investigation see if we find anything else. Don't forget this one. Oh, yes. Tell us a little bit about what you found over here, Jose. We found this tree. Not rotten. It's basically making very sturdy from the ground. However, it's ripped, I'll say, about four feet from the ground up. I'm a very strong man, I'll tell you that one. Myself. I cannot break it. And hey, what, it would, what do you weigh, Jose? I weigh 219 pounds. That size of my biceps are 17, so I'm pretty strong on that. And I can still jank this thing from nowhere. Yes, son, cedar ball's there. So, so I believe that we are in an area where there's, where there's plenty of activity. We're going to pause now and, and continue our search. This way. Okay, we're here back in the woods, close to Rick's house, and we found a number of trees anywhere from one to two inches in diameter, uh, just snapped across, just broken. And as you can see, we followed the tree down. There's nothing fell on the tree. Nothing that could have took it down in any such way. Uh, Jose's tried to break this one even more and wasn't able to. So we just wanted to make sure we included some of those. A great, great number of these on this property. Talked to a neighbor 
She said she's lived here 18 years. She hasn't seen or heard anything, but said she's on disability, so she probably doesn't get out a whole lot. So we're going to continue to look and see what else we find. Jose, tell us a little bit what we got here. What we got here is a small tree that is about two, two and a half inch in diameter. It looks like it's still pretty much hard. However, it's taken down from the root. Pushed over, huh? It's been like pushed over. However, there's a little branch over here, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's just a piece of branch. It's not as strong. How sturdy is this tree? I can show you. It is pretty sturdy. Actually. So how does tree get pushed over like this? It had to be something pretty strong to push like that. Because if I want to do it, if I can jump in the middle of it, I can't even still take it down again. It'll be hard for me to take it down. Well, let's continue on. What is this? <laughs> All right, we're here just off from where we found the exit. Is that your footprint? Okay, just off from where we found the big X's in the woods. Now we found a rather large pile of bones. Looks to be cow. I hope that you can see this because it's awfully sunny out today. But there's a very big area of it been scattered pretty good, I'd say by smaller animals. It appears that this was a very large cow. Yeah. Or we're assuming it was a cow. Possibly a horse. You see the skull right up here. I believe it was horse. Taking that skull with me when I go. This is pretty awesome. That's the lower jaw? Mm -hmm. Okay, cow, or some kind of animal killed here. Very close to all of our activities. I mean, just, you get a feel of the exit. There's some bones over here. The exit are right back right there. There's the back side of an X. The X like that we recorded earlier. Yeah, they're a little further back over there. Can't exactly see where, but we're very, very close. I believe it's more than coincidence, everything we're finding here. So, let's get on across, get back over here, and carry on with our, our search. All right, here we are again, and Jose's found yet another X pattern or cross, whatever you want to call it. Here with the kids, Jose's checking a fence line right now to the pasture where we just found the dead animal. We got us a souvenir, we brought the skull. Looks very cool. Weighs a ton. Weighs a ton, Gabby says. The longer we're here, the more positive I am that they're Either is something around these parts, or has been something around these parts. There's just too much for it to be coincidence. There's a lot of downed trees, but the things that we're finding have no explanation. What'd you find, Jose? Around here, there's not a sign 
that they used to we'll use wooden poles. However, there's one over here that's been laying in here. It's been laying against the fence. All that that's the dump. I don't know, that's pretty curious. Curious. They're not using wooden poles, but yet there's a wooden pole laying against the fence over there. Why is that you can tell a fence post from not a fence post, son. I'm just filming a little bit as I walk. Maybe if somebody watches this film later on, they'll notice something that maybe I didn't. I checked this side out a few years ago, and there was a thick patch of greenery. And in that patch of greenery, there was a great deal of limbs that seemed to be weaved together. Here's some pretty unusual damage to a tree. Let's see if I can focus in on this where you can see it. Right here. Very unusual. Jose, you're going to want to come take a look at this tree. He's up there. It's not from the background. Uh, sounds like a motor cycle. Sounds like some disease for chopping. I hope I didn't get mad cow disease from carrying this. You ain't got mad cow disease from carrying those bones. Yeah. Hey, it could be called dry bone. Just like I'm on It's an enemy. There's another small tree that's been over, all near the X's. I've not found any tracks this time. Had some possible footprints the last time we investigated this site. But right now, it's too dry. There's too many leaves covering the ground. We're back to the spot with the cedar. Don't want to lose this spot. I want to make sure that I take this with me. See if I can show it to the trainers. I think I'll wait here for Jose. This area is not completely secluded. There's several houses in, around within, say, a half mile. But the woods are pretty thick where they're at. And there's veins of woods that run different directions and go on probably for miles. We haven't followed them out. I'd like to have permission to go into some of the deeper areas and deeper woods. Well, we're back here at this tree. Uh, we thought we had this film, but I apparently didn't take it off pause. Uh, got Jose with me here, and he just pointed out, we looked this tree earlier, I showed some damage on it. The one, explain the one that you're showing right now is the old one. And the, the damage on this tree has many layers I mean, it goes through several different layers on this tree, and it just looks like a rotten tree. But this tree is really very fresh. It's uh, very, very thick bark, and the damage goes all the way down. Now, what's unusual about this damage is that Jose done an experiment right here, which we thought we filmed, 
Yeah, we good. tried to see how we could damage this tree. And there's damage right up here, probably about seven feet tall or seven feet up. It's old damage, which we couldn't reach. But uh, something's damaged the tree there, and it's got fresh damage all the way down. Now, Jose tried to see how durable this tree was, if this could just be chance rottenness. So he's beat it with a pretty sturdy stick here. I'm going to get back and let you watch the experiment again.